This lecture is about how we can evaluate a ranked list. In this lecture, we will continue the discussion of evaluation. In particular, we are going to look at the, how we can evaluate the ranked list of results. In the previous lecture, we talked about uh, precision and recall. These are the two basic measures for uh, quantitatively measuring the performance of a search result. But as we talked about uh, um, ranking before, we framed the text retrieval problem as a ranking problem. So we also need to evaluate uh, the quality of a ranked list. How can we use precision and recall to evaluate a, a ranked list? Well, naturally, we have to look at the precision and recall at different cutoffs because in the end, the approximation of relevant document set given by a ranked list is determined by where the user stops browsing, right? If we assume the user sequentially browses the list of results, the user would stop at some point and that point would determine the set. And then that's the most important um, cutoff that we'll have to consider when we compute the precision and recall. Without knowing where exactly the user would stop, then we'll have to consider uh, all the positions where the user could stop. So let's look at these positions. Uh, look at this slide and then let's look at the, uh, what if the user stops at the first document? What's the precision and recall at this point? What do you think? Well, it's easy to see that this document is relevant. So the precision is one out of one. We have got one document and that's relevant. What about the recall? Well, note that we assume that the, there are 10 relevant documents for this query in the collection. So it's one out of 10. What if the user stops at the second position? Top two. Well, the precision is the same, 100%, two out of two, and the recall is two out of 10. What if the user stops at the third position? Well, this is interesting because in this case, we have not got any uh, additional relevant document. So the recall doesn't change, but the precision is lower because we've got a non-relevant one. So what's exactly the precision? Well, it's two out of three right? And recall is the same, 2 out of 10. So when would we see another point where the recall would be different? Now, if you look down the list, well, it won't happen until we have uh, seen another relevant document, in this case, D5. At that point, the recall is increased to 3 out of 10, and the precision is the 3 out of 5. So you can see, if we keep doing this, we can also get to D8, and then we will have a precision of 4 out of 8 because there are 8 documents and 4 of them are relevant and the recall is a 4 out of 10. Now when can we get a recall of 5 out of 10? Well, in this list, we don't have it. So we have to go down on the list. We don't know where it is. But as a convenience, we often assume that the precision is 0 uh, at all the the, other, uh, the precision is uh, zero at all the other levels of recall that are beyond the search results. So of course, this is a pessimistic assumption. The actual precision would be higher, but we may make this assumption uh, in order to uh, have an easy way to uh, compute another measure called average precision uh, that we'll discuss later. Now I should also say, now here you see we make these assumptions that are clearly not uh, accurate. But this is usually okay for the purpose of comparing two text retrieval methods. And this is for the relative comparison. So it's okay if the actual measure or actual, actual number deviates a little bit from the true number, as long as the deviation uh, is not biased toward any particular retrieval method. And we're okay, we can still accurately tell which method works better. And this is an important point to keep in mind. When you compare different algorithms, the key is to avoid any bias toward each method. And as long as you can avoid that, it's okay if you do transformation of these measures in any way. 
so you can preserve the order. Okay, so we just talked about that uh, we can get a lot of precision recall numbers at different positions. So now you can imagine we can plot a curve. And this just shows on the uh, x-axis, we show the recalls. And on the y-axis, uh, we show the precision. So the precision levels are marked as 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 1.0. Right? So this is uh, the different levels of recall. And the y-axis also has uh, different marks that's for precision. Um, so we plotted these uh, precision recall numbers that we have got as points on this picture. Now uh, we can further uh, link these points to form a curve. As you see, we assume that all the other uh, precision that the high level recalls to be zero. And that's uh, why they are down here. Right? So they are all zero. And this, the actual curve probably will be something like this. But as we just uh, uh, discussed, it, it, it doesn't matter that much for comparing two methods. Because this would be an uh, underestimate for all the methods. Okay, so now that we uh, have this precision recall curve, uh, how can we compare rank, uh, two ranked lists? Right, so that means we have to compare two PR curves. And here I show uh, two cases, where system A is shown in red, system B is shown in blue with crosses. Right, so which one is better? I hope you can see where well, system A is clearly better. Why? Because for the same level of recall, let's see, same level of recall here, and you can see the precision point by system A is better than um, system B. So there's no question. Indeed, you can imagine what does the curve look like for an ideal search system. Well, it has to have perfect precision at all the recall points, so it has to be this line. That would be the ideal system. In general, the higher the curve is, the better. Right? The problem is that we might see a case like this. This actually happens often. Like the two curves cross each other. Now in this case, which one is better? What do you think? Now this is a real problem that you actually might face. Suppose you build a search engine uh, and you have an old algorithm that's shown here in blue or system B and you have come up with a new idea and you test it and the results are shown in red, uh, curve A. Now, your question is, is your new method better than the old method? Or more uh, practically, do you have to replace the algorithm that you are already using your, uh, in your search engine with another uh, new algorithm? So should we use system uh, method A to replace method B? This is going to be a real decision that you have to make. If you make the replacement, the search engine would behave like system A here. Whereas if you don't do that, it will be like a system B. So what do you do? Now, if you want to spend more time to think about this, pause the video. And it's actually very useful to think about that. As I said, it's a real decision that you have to make if you are building your own search engine or if you are working uh, for a company that uh, cares about the search. Now, if you have thought about this for a moment, you might realize that, well, in this case, it's hard to say. You know, some users might like a system A, some users might like, like system B. So what's the difference here? Well, the difference is just that, you know, in the um, low level of recall in this region, system B is better, there's higher precision. But in high recall region, system a is better. Now, so that also means it depends on whether the user cares about the high recall or low recall, but high precision. And you can imagine if someone is just going to check out what's happening today and you want to find some random in the news, well, which one is better? What do you think? In this case, clearly system B is better because the user is unlikely examining a lot of results. The user doesn't care about the high recall. On the other hand, if you think about a case where a user is doing, let's say, a literature survey, you are uh, starting a problem. You want to find whether your idea uh, has been studied before. In that case, you emphasize high recall. 
So you want to see as many relevant documents as possible. Therefore, you might favor system A. So that means which one is better actually depends on users and more precisely users task. So this means you may not necessarily be able to come up with one number uh, that would accurately depict the performance. You have to look at the overall picture. Yet, as I said, when you have a practical decision to make whether you replace the algorithm with another, then you may have to actually come up with a single number to quantify each uh, method. Or when we compare many different methods in research, ideally we have one number to compare uh, them with so that we can easily make a lot of comparisons. So for all these reasons, it's desirable to have one single number to measure that. So how do we do that? And that uh, needs a number to summarize the range. So here again, it's the precision recall curve, right? And one way to summarize this whole ranked list or this whole curve is look at the area underneath the curve, right? So this is one way to measure that. There are other ways to measure that, but it just turns out that uh, this particular way of measuring it has been very uh, popular and has been used since a long time ago for text retrieval evaluation. And this is uh, basically computed uh, in this way, and it's called average precision. Basically, we're going to take a, a look at the, uh, every different uh, recall point and then look at the precision. So we know, you know, this is one precision, and this is another with a different recall. Now this, we don't count this one because the recall level is the same. And we're going to then look at the, this number, and that's the precision at a different recall level, etc. So we have all these, you know, added up. These are the precisions at the different points corresponding to retrieving the first relevant document, the second, and then the third, the fourth, etc. Now we missed the many relevant documents. So in all those cases, we just assume that they have zero precisions. And then finally, we take the average. So we divide it by 10, and which is the total number of relevant documents in the collection. Note that here, we're not dividing this sum by four which is the number of retrieved relevant documents. Now imagine if I divide by four, what would happen? Now think about this for a moment. It's a common mistake that people uh, sometimes uh, overlook. Right? So uh, if we you divide this by four, it's actually not very good. In fact, uh, you are favoring a system that would retrieve very few relevant documents. As in that case, the denominator would be very small. So this would be not a good measure. So note that this denominator is 10, the total number of random documents. And this will basically compute the area underneath the curve. And this is the standard method used for evaluating a ranked list. Note that it actually combines recall and precision. But first, you know, we have precision numbers here. But second, we also consider recall because if you miss the many, there will be many zeros here. So it combines precision and recall. And furthermore, you can see this measure is sensitive to a small change of a position of a relevant document. Let's say if I move this relevant document up a little bit, now it would increase this mean at uh, this average precision. Whereas if I move any relevant document down, let's say I move this relevant document down, then it would decrease the, uh, the average precision. So this is very good because it's very sensitive to the ranking of every relevant document. It can tell small differences between two ranked lists. And that's what we want. Sometimes one algorithm only works slightly better than another. And we want to see this difference. In contrast, if we look at the precision at the 10 documents, if you look at this, this whole set, well, we, what's the precision? What do you think? Well, it's easy to see that's four out of 10, right? So that precision is very meaningful because it tells us what user would see. So 
that's pretty useful, right? So it's a meaningful measure from a user's perspective. But if we use this measure to compare systems, it wouldn't be good because it wouldn't be sensitive to where these four relevant documents are ranked. If I move them around, the precision at 10 is still uh, the same, right? So this is not a good measure for comparing different algorithms. In contrast, the average precision is a much better measure. It can tell the difference of um, different uh, difference in ranked lists in uh, subtle ways.